Hello everyone. Good afternoon from Bangladesh. Welcome to the second webinar session of Shotoboshi Shotoasha Rise Up webinar series. Today's topic is hurdles behind creating a successful startup. Startup Bangladesh Limited is delighted to partner with High Commission of India Dhaka to host this Shotoboshi Shotoasha Rise Up webinar series to commemorate the birth centennial of father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the golden jubilee of Bangladesh and 75th anniversary of India's independence. This webinar series is also being supported by Startup India, Bangladesh Startup Consortium, BD Year, and Economic Reporters Forum. This series is a part of various programs Startup Bangladesh Limited is organizing under its inaugural campaign, Shotoboshi Shotoasha, which means Century of Million Dreams under which Startup Bangladesh Limited is going to invest BDT 100 crore in 50 startups. Today, we have an esteemed panel of four amazing entrepreneurs from Bangladesh and India who has passed through a lot of challenges in their pathways uh, to their entrepreneurship and became successful and even became the role model for the sparring entrepreneurs in today's time and uh, they have been creating amazing impact in the society. Not going to uh, delay on the introductions, I'd like to go to our panelists and introduce uh, to our audience. Uh, I, uh, first, uh, I'd like to call Mr. Sridhar Bhimbu, CEO, Zoho Corporation. Namaskar. Uh, thank you for having me today. I'm very happy to participate in my first event in Bangladesh. It's a, really an honor to be here. And uh, I, we, Zoho Corp is one of the largest software product companies out of India. And I'd be very happy to share my experiences with this panel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, sir. Second, we have with us Mr. Hossein Elias, co-founder and CEO, Patao Limited. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, would be very happy and very excited to share some of the lessons that I picked up while building Patha. Great. Thank you, uh, Elias Bhai. Then we have with us Mr. Adnan Intiaz Halim, co-founder and CEO, Sheba Platform Limited. Hi, everyone. Uh, really excited uh, to uh, join today, especially uh, one of my uh, dream founder with Siddhar Sir, Zoho. Uh, so talking about us, uh, I work as a co-founder and the CEO of Sheva Platform Limited, which is a tech company, work for a small uh, medium entrepreneur. We mainly work for SME, micro SME, and we are building the ecosystem uh, to uh, accelerate their career and uh, the business. Thank you. Thank you, Adnan Bhai. And last but not the least, the panelists, Mr. Anjan Mukherjee, founder, Tal Tech Solutions. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Anjan Mukherjee. I work for Taral Tech. At Taral Tech, uh, we have created a reactor which can be fitted in a borewell hand pump to give safe water for the underprivileged in underserved areas. And when we are talking about impact, we have a very interesting solution that has been offered by Tile Tech and impacting millions of lives positively, not only in India, but across Asia and other um, continents. And um, now I'd like to go to the founder of Tile Tech, Anjan Mukherjee. Sir, we'd like to learn how was your experience while we are, you are building such an impactful enterprise? And what are the challenges that you have been facing while um, you are creating this technology uh, for uh, water purification and setting up, going to the rural areas, talking to the people, convincing them. So there have been lots of hurdles that you have been facing. And even when you have been like uh, working with this, uh, your technology. So uh, can you sir share with our audience like what kind of pains that you have faced during your pathways and uh, what are the steps that you have taken to minimize the challenges and become like um, what you were today? Uh, 
so the first thing i need to say is uh, that uh, i never ever thought that i'll ever become an entrepreneur uh, in fact my parents were both teachers there is not a single business uh, entity uh, in our whole family so me being an entrepreneur itself uh, i would think it's a project of uh, a higher being like say god he wanted to uh, test out person who knows nothing about entrepreneurship and wants to make a entrepreneur out of uh, him so that's where i, I started off and uh, even for the technology i am self taught i don't have a background uh, in this uh, technology at all but uh, having said that we were working in a we, working for uh, wastewater treatment and uh, things like that uh, high tech chemical engineering uh, problems and uh, then uh, in a village we saw that uh, this uh, waterborne diseases are a huge thing and uh, Uh, there is really no solution for the underprivileged and uh, under areas and uh, the main reason for that is uh, uh, they are so remote that uh, there is nothing which will reach them there it doesn't have uh, probably electricity or rather uh, continuous electricity so uh, these sort of uh, problems were uh, humongous if and there is probably no medical facility close by to access uh, anyone falls ill so having seen that uh, we designed this uh, particular uh, reactor this is the taraltech uh, maji reactor this can just be fitted in a borewell hand pump and you will instantaneously microbe kill the water does not require any consumables no uh, it's not a filter it's uh, doesn't require any maintenance it doesn't require any operating cost the microbe killed water comes at a decimals of a paisa per liter and it will last forever so having said that what are the challenges which are there number one challenge was i don't come from a business background the second challenge was this is the first in the world product this technology has never ever been used anywhere else so there is no written publications or you know anything like that so most of the time we are creating the literature you can say and uh, because of that to convince people they think that it's all some mumbo jumbo magic but uh, it's actually based on simple principles of physics so convincing that and letting people to try it out that itself was a huge uh, challenge and uh, these challenge keeps uh, coming for absolutely everyone it is not uh, specific to me as an entrepreneur but as an entrepreneur as actually all three of my other uh, colleagues have said Uh, that you need uh, perseverance you need a curiosity to uh, really go after uh, something and when you realize the impact which it can actually create that keeps you motivated and uh, going so that in short is what's been uh, our story and uh, i'm very thrilled that uh, you know it's uh, getting traction uh, not only in uh, india in india we are there in quite a number of places and it's already impacted more than a million lives but uh, we would think uh, bangladesh also has uh, some sort of a problem with uh, getting safe water to the remotest areas so i'm sure it will pick up here also thanks to you all thank you sir really um, very amazing product that you have been working and uh, very useful like um, i have seen like uh, when i was uh, Uh, traveling very remote places in the country also in bangladesh i've seen like how people are suffering from um, waterborne diseases and uh, access to fresh water fresh drinking water while we are talking about globalized uh, like taking a tech product in a global market as uh, sridhar has said like a product like 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 the innovative product like the yours that tal tech is uh, uh, created and uh, selling to the market so what is the like uh, your your steps could be like when you think about going to uh, other markets with your product like uh, markets entering when when you are thinking to enter into bangladesh or maybe in a in a country in in, in africa what kind of um, steps do you think and what kind of um, steps you should be taking to enter into that market to sell your product and um, also supporting the lives in the in the community Uh, who are suffering from uh, access to water 
for drinking water. So over to you, Anjan, sir. Uh, I think that will be a very good way to understand how uh, non-tech product and uh, like non-digital product and digital product has been uh, doing this scale. Over to you, Anjan. Yeah, uh, the first thing which we did with the product is uh, since it's meant for uh, people uh, who have absolutely no technical skills, neither for, uh, you know, maintenance or uh, even operating it. So we made it uh, maintenance and operation cost uh, free because even there is no logistics uh, required. So the first time installation is uh, required for which all you need to do is open seven bolts from the top of a hand pump and just slide it in. Takes less than an hour to do that. So we have simplified the product to such an extent that absolutely anybody can do it anywhere in the world. So that has been uh, the real uh, challenge that how to do it, how to make it so compact and uh, mass manufacturable, scalable, uh, becomes uh, totally geography agnostic. So these have been the challenges. Now, once you have solved this in terms of the product, then like... Uh, even what uh, Sridhar said, you need local help because for that last mile connectivity, you definitely need uh, someone who uh, will give you that uh, number one, the comfort that, uh, you know, there is someone there who can be approached in case there is a problem. Uh, the second one is obviously if uh, there is a problem, then uh, he's there to solve it at hand. Uh, very, very. And for the local ecosystem, which uh, uh, the last mile is very challenging anywhere in the world. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's a challenge which all of us face, all of us. We have a couple of questions from our audience that uh, I'd like to address uh, to um, Anjan sir and uh, uh, Ilyas Bhai. So I'd like to go from first to Anjan sir, that uh, when you are, uh, people are building uh, a product like yours, they need a rigorous R&D process. And it's really very uh, time consuming, it takes a time to do the R&D, develop the product, finalize the product and going enter into the market. So how do you suggest that those who are working such kind of products, what should be their steps to um, uh, take initiative or uh, we have uh, learned that about the patients, but also, this takes a uh, lots of uh, energies, lots of uh, scientific uh, activities. So, how you suggest that uh, when entrepreneurs are building such products and doing such rigorous R and Ds uh, to develop the product, to finalize the uh, uh, to finalize this kind of product and go to market? What kind of strategies you suggest to the entrepreneurs? Uh, I can tell you what I have done. Uh, I don't know whether everyone can uh, do a thing like this. This being a product. Uh, I built the basic uh, model and then I actually sold it uh, to the company who in turn actually fitted it and uh, gave me the results uh, because on my own, we, uh, by the way, we are bootstrapped. So we didn't have the money and uh, no one would have actually given us the money because uh, it's a first in the world product with totally unproven everything. So the only way we could go was actually convince someone that, you know, please try it out and tell me, tell us uh, the results, um, give us the results. And that's what uh, people actually did. And uh, you will find such people at all places who are willing to take uh, uh, small risks. And uh, that's uh, exactly what we did. And slowly, slowly we, uh, you know, progressed. Uh, the results which came out of very many people uh, they gave us insights because we are hardly a team. We are almost, uh, I mean, I work out of my bedroom. You will be shocked to know. Uh, but everything is subcontracted out. And this subcontracting model actually works very, very good because uh, the people who you want are uh, number one so expensive that you cannot have it. And if you, even if you can have it, you will not have uh, the work given to them. You will not have the type of work to give them. And you uh, cannot actually recruit uh, all the best people who are going to solve this because then instead of solving a technical problem, you'll be solving probably an HR problem uh, amongst themselves. So that's how I have done it. I'm sure there must be other people who have done other things. But uh, in a product like ours, uh, this is the only way I could have thought of.
Yeah, thank you, uh, sir, for, for your advice. So I'll just go uh, one more round to all of the panelists, just for one sentence to the, our aspiring entrepreneurs, what do you want to say? So I'll start with Siddhar, sir. So one sentence to our entrepreneurs. Be persistent. Be persistent. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Um, I'll go to Adnan Bhai. One sentence to uh, the audience. Same as Caesar said, says, be present. <laughs> um, uh, Anjan, sir, uh, one sentence for the entrepreneurs. So, my this thing is enjoy whatever you are doing because uh, either way, then you are a success. Very good. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. And, uh, and Ilias, by one sentence for the entrepreneurs and audience. I, I think everyone has said it very well, right? It, you have to be persistent. You have to, you know, enjoy what you're doing and you just have to welcome the challenges. You need, need to always grow, right? Um, yeah. So just learn and grow and be humble. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all the panelists, uh, uh, for your uh, valuable time yeah. giving to Startup Analysis Limited and uh, for this uh, our webinar series and thank you our audience for joining us i'd like to invite you all for our next webinars keep in touch with us in uh, through our facebook and social medias and our website to uh, see what the next exciting webinar session we are going to offer you and i'm really happy and humble and uh, very proud to be a part of today's panel discussion session thank you so much have a good day uh, stay safe and stay well <laughs>